world undisclosed location in the great western desert in the land of the free and autonomous Native American people, the 2024 presidential campaign in the next time to return all U.S. land back to their rights owners. This is the Ben Zion Podcast. Techno Communism. Back to the Futurism Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Ben Zion, and it's a, a brisk, brisk night. Uh, here in Arizona, especially if you're uh, squatting inside of a, an abandoned building that looks suspiciously like it was built by alien technology. So I have my nice uh, corn bag foot warmer <laughs> on my feet, <laughs> just a few inches from the camera, and um, uh, the uh, it also has alien-looking guys on it. <laughs> If it's uh, if it's something, uh, if it's a doodad, something to do with robots or uh, alien technology, uh, I might I might snatch it up. <laughs> um, but um, uh, thanks thanks again for coming, and uh, I'm going to talk, uh, as the headline suggests, about how artificial general intelligence, as you've been conditioned to understand it, is kind of nonsense. And, um, but asterisk, in a certain sense, um, uh, you're underestimating uh, this, but um, uh, because it's all filtered through a, uh, a capitalist propaganda and things of this kind, um, uh, the, the, the outlook is a little, a little bit different. Uh, so the reason I decided to do this show is because I was reading... Uh, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups uh, from people who are interested in this sort of thing. They're always talking about how um, uh, some incredible uh, benchmark has been met, like uh, an untrained um, uh, a chatbot is, is now able to pass the bar <laughs> with no trouble or uh, pass a medical exam, uh, uh, but become a doctor with no trouble. Why, God, uh, robots are taking over. <laughs> um it, that I mean, it's kind of interesting. It almost suggests almost nothing as to what uh, a chatbot can actually do, except that a chatbot could have an interesting conversation with you about medical uh, uh, advancement, which it could be good, it could be helpful, uh, but it's it's certainly not um, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, a robot labor force uh, that the headlines would tend to suggest. <laughs> um, and um, uh, the, there's the major, major problem here is, of course, not that uh, these benchmarks are being met, um, because that's fascinating. Uh, the major problem is that none of this has very much to do with improving your life or the lives of people around the world. And again, as I suggested, that's because um, this uh, technology is controlled uh, by for-profit organizations and all of its applications are um, uh, similarly mandated. Um, and all of its, all of the discourse around technology is uh, very carefully micromanaged um, uh, so that n almost nothing genuinely revolutionary, um, like I would hope you would expect uh, when talking about artificial general intelligence, occurs in the world of tech. Um, I mean, unless you consider um, uh, robot standing robot armies being able to kill uh, protesters, or, uh, things like that. Um, as um, as really impressive, uh, you know, unless you uh, think of uh, just uh, unimaginably complex uh, spy games um, of the kind of you know the tip of the iceberg uh, was Facebook, also a military contractor controlled by by people like Peter Thiel, who are CIA um, and who have no problem with putting all of those, um, you know, trillions of dollars of resources when you consider 
the amount of uh, available data and the amount of um, influence, all of that towards um, in, within Facebook or toward toppling governments uh, just to see if they could do it, kind of. Um, and um, undermine, you know, undermining the, uh, elections and things in 20 different countries. Um, the fact that this is now uh, starting to happen in the U.S., um, uh, they, you know, these people were pretty gung-ho about doing this sort of thing um, in uh, creating, uh, using advanced technology to create instability anywhere else. That's, ju that's just, uh, you know, part of the, the game. In, in the typical American's mind. But when it when it's starting to now affect the U.S., uh, suddenly this is at an existential risk, or um, you know, some of these people are very shy uh, uh, talking about these things in the way that they weren't uh, a few years ago. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a, there's, there's a, um, uh, there's an elephant in the room, which is that uh, the U.S. is kind of um, in trouble, and rightly so. Um, because uh, it's run uh, by Christ the fascist lunatics. It's run by um, um, hard right um, insanity, and that's always been the case. You know, there's. I was uh, arguing with a couple of friends, uh, one who I might have on this show on a different matter, um, um, about. Um, you know, I, I've sh uh, shared a few th uh, things. Uh, with the hashtag abolish the CIA, uh, all centered on the bombshell of the last uh, quarter, but it's kind of been building for a few years about the um, uh, CIA's knowledge of involvement and direct role in the death of a sitting president, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And John Fitzgerald Kennedy was not even anything close to a socialist, um, uh, uh, just more American dog shit by a certain perspective, which is what my friends were saying. And I said, yeah, you're right. Uh, but um, but he, what he was not is what every president has been since, arguably. Maybe there could be one or one exception, which is uh, behaving as if they were a CIA asset. He was against the CIA and wanted to um, um, have a, a more isolationist uh, uh, foreign policy and, and role on the world stage and was largely a peaceable man. You know, being liberal dog shit and being this peaceable individual are not mutually exclusive. Although, if you are not a Marxist, you cannot really be a person of peace uh, because there's a billion people in the world that don't have what they need. And um, uh, a person of peace recognizes that and takes action and, and cultivates the understanding of the world around them uh, to fix that. And liberals do not do that. No one of the capital class, capitalist class is capable of doing that. Insofar as they think about those things, it is very cynically uh, to try and prop up the kind of military mechanisms that I was describing a moment ago. And, um, uh, but this... Uh, uh, this person who had the back of his head blown off, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, um, um, was nevertheless one of the better um, presidents of the 20th century, which maybe isn't saying much, um, but um, um, he was prepared to do uh, three or four things um, um, that were uh, things that uh, are not even on the table anymore. Um, things that would just be, you know, not being a complete lunatic, like kind of taking care of people and kind of uh, not just um, escalating towards nuclear oblivion and, and, similar, and similar outcomes uh, equally upsetting. And, you know, if people like this hadn't been allowed to uh, be at the helm of Western, uh, Western power, you know, we wouldn't be looking at um, uh, things like a cl cl capitalist climate apocalypse that we now face. Um, and so this is, this is not a joke. And most people in tech are still guilty of these things. Most people in American life are still 
allowing this to happen? Because it wouldn't take much, right? How many people have to be on the street um, uh, saying these things before this changes, before you can't just have um, um, a country that spends 60% uh, of discretionary income on, on triple billing military contractors? How much, how much would really have to uh, a change in public opinion for this to stop? Not as much as you think. Which is why I've said one other time, and, you know, I, you know, this isn't a big show. I invite people on the show. They say, eh, I don't know, it's, it's, you got a hundred views on that one episode. Good for you. <laughs> uh, you know, there's some stuff that I've done that's got a, a bit more than that. But um, I believe that um, um, we, you just keep uh, 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 whittling away at people. Um, you know, I make these memes and I share them, you know. People, you you can't you can't always quantify that, but I know I can count. Many many millions of people have have been exposed, at least um, in in the briefest glance, um, to Marxist teller, tech accelerationist ideas because of what I've done. Now maybe m millions of impressions. What does that amount to? It could be a few thousand people, uh, but uh, it's not zero. Um, and um, um, I would encourage you to take a similar tack. Don't believe the hype um, in anything, um, but um, particularly when it comes to um, the, the capitalist class uh, narratives about what you can do, what you should do uh, to help to uh, build a better world. Um, I'm going to uh, talk for a little while about... Um, the role of artificial general intelligence in um, uh, in bu building a world revolution, building um, a stable, uh, uh, a planned economy in any one country and ultimately in um, every every land. Um, I believe I believe that this will happen pretty quickly um, uh, because I do believe that artificial general intelligence is. Um, on track uh, to uh, even beat um, Ray Kurzweil's prediction. Uh, perhaps the most famous uh, prediction on this matter is um, Ray Kurzweil um, uh, saying that uh, uh, more and more sophisticated algorithms uh, uh, having a greater and greater influence, uh, and he describes it in, in a pretty, uh, a little bit of a fanciful way with, with talking about Moore's Law, which is kind of, you know, but, but um, that these, uh, uh, these uh, more sophisticated uh, computing technology and software uh, will lead to um, a, a, an eff effective world. He describes world revolution by 2045. And he doesn't uh, put it in terms of um, um, uh, 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 material conditions um, or... Um, uh, the abolishing of private wealth. So he's an exceedingly wealthy man himself. Um, but even the people who are not particularly wealthy um, usually don't do this because they don't really care about other people. L uh, let's be frank. Or they're, they're afraid. Um, um, people, oftentimes people living in the West, they might want to see a world revolution. Uh, they might say, well, that seems to be a pretty good outcome. Um, but um, you know, what uh, they, they may be legitimately concerned for uh, losing uh, their, uh, their uh, gainful employment or things like that. I mean, uh, to be honest, if I had a little more uh, uh, a good sense, um, I probably should have been more like them because uh, it was kind of um, on track to um, uh, be having a little bit uh, nicer lifestyle than what I have now. Um, and and legitimately did have a little bit less in life, life, life uh, nicer lifestyle if I played that game. But um, this world is in danger. You know, there's no uh, uh, there's no winners at life in a world where all mammalian life has gone extinct. Uh, <laughs> and um, and that is uh, what uh, capitalist class. 
uh, uh, class people are effectively doing uh, by not supporting, um, uh, vocally supporting world revolution, by not support vocally supporting uh, revolutionary action in other other areas. Uh, what they're doing is saying, um, I know the planet's dying, but I'm um, too weak and too simple-minded uh, to try and do what's right. So I contribute in a variety of ways to that problem um, because, hey, I like having a nice house. I'll just play out the string for the next 20 years <laughs> of having a, a somewhat nicer life than I otherwise would have. And the only cost is that my children won't have a planet to live on. Um, and that's not just Ray Kurzweil, Peter Thiel, or Elon Musk, or mega millionaire X, Y, or Z, or politician X, Y, or Z. That's you. I know this. I mean, there's probably, if there's a chance, if you're watching this show, maybe that's not you. But there's 400 million people in the United States. I've looked at some demographics that suggest that uh, a very small fraction of them are legitimately uh, uh, revolutionary Marxists. And, you know, that's not a controversial statement. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to read a lot of charts to figure that out. Um uh, I, I was going to talk more about AI, um, uh, but uh, um, it's kind of nerd stuff, right? Like you can just read uh, trade headlines um, and, and and things to uh, and and uh, and it's not always wildly interesting either. Um, uh, Karl Marx uh, said that um, ultimately, whenever it occurred, you know, some of these people had more aggressive predictions about. World Revolution. Lenin thought uh, that um, uh, after uh, uh, Russia uh, uh, became Bolshevik run, uh, that the entire world would become Bolshevik run uh, uh, within a few years. He was he expected in two thousand in uh, sorry in nineteen twenty one was when uh, uh, Russia Russia was coming. Uh, uh, a, a stable Soviet state. He said, in 1922, the rest of the world. <laughs> That's a pretty aggressive prediction. But of course, um, this is also, maybe he had, he was an intelligent man, maybe he knew that there was a chance that wouldn't happen. But this is a, a feature of revolutionary optimism, is to uh, try to convince people that it will. <laughs> and sometimes that includes saying that it will happen even if you're not 100% sure that it will. <laughs> um, um, but uh, Karl Marx uh, said that um, um, when a labor became automated to this high of a degree, uh, that was, a, but that would, whenever that occurred, that that would be the time that, uh, that capitalism would be no longer a thing. And there's good many uh, chapters and a couple of books of his uh, uh, on, this, on this subject. I'll share with you a joke uh, that uh, uh, someone uh, shared with me, which is um, a, a little bit of a dig at, I guess you could say it's a joke, it's a dig at um, uh, elitist uh, tech tropes. Uh, so one, uh, what, 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 or rather, what is it that, what are some things that people say, tech people say, being um, capitalist class douchebags, uh, that... Uh, uh, that's that you know one of one of these things is uh this old chestnut um where um hey uh, oh there's a billion people in the world who don't have um uh, access uh to the things that they need oh well they should learn to code what well, what's your problem just learn to code why can't you be a person with access to uh um uh, the things that you need, uh, as I have had to uh, have a certain kind of lifestyle, uh, you know, uh, the the their answer to the thing completely ignores the the set of problems. Um, and, and there's a lot of there's a you could make a long list of cliches like this. And, and it's not and every American will say it. It's not limited to tech douchebags, but tech douchebags maybe. You know, you should know better. If you see some of this writing on the wall, if you see artificial and general intelligence coming, and uh, you know that maybe, hmm, 
as my friend who was uh, making this observation said, so now that artificial general intelligence is here and chatbots, which can uh, pass law school and medical school, uh, can also, um, and this is maybe not completely intuitive, so it bears stating uh, for you who are interested in advancing technology, they can also write a lot of code, uh, which means that if you, uh, before, if you didn't want to um, um, become a computer programmer because uh, you're dyslexic, it gives you a headache, <laughs> you're kind of dumb like me, um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a computer programmer. I taught uh, a programming to little kids, <laughs> kindergartners, <laughs> and fifth graders, and, and uh, a couple of ages like that, um, a couple of uh, uh, not terribly useful computer programming languages and um, um, a variety of things along these lines, but I'm not, I'm not much of a computer programmer, really. Um, uh, but um, even if you're you're not um, uh, inclined to do that historically, natural language processing is advanced uh, to such a degree that you could do that in your own voice in the next few years. And you can kind of do that to a degree that you couldn't uh, 10 years ago uh, because of this existing uh, chat GTPs type stuff. Uh, so um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so my friend was saying, what's what's next? What um, uh, now, if you don't have people saying, well, just learn to code, you know, what's what's the new line? What's what's the new line on uh, on uh, on advanced algorithms. And, and I said, you know, well, I'll tell you what the new line on advanced algorithms is. It's workers of the world unite. Um, and that's uh, what I'm going to talk about for the remaining uh, 10 minutes or so on, on this program. 